Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion on this glorious day. My name is Kimberly Quinn, <clears throat> and I am thrilled to talk about, you know, uh, in, the, in, the, in the realm of, of kindness, just think small. And that might sound counterintuitive, you know, it might, especially to, I think of my, my, my young uh, Minecrafters out there, they're, they're, their eyes are big, they're ready to save the world, and I love that. It's one of the reasons that my niche is with young adults are just enthusiastic and just hopeful and just so all about wrap arounding, wrapping around, wrap arounding, I suppose that would work, wrapping around the world and each, each other in the world, and it's just so great. Here's the thing, though. <clears throat> in reality, it's, it's, it's the small stuff that matters. And so sometimes, and there have been a million kindness talks, maybe this one won't be that different, but maybe a little different, because a lot of times we we can put off and with with good intentions i guess right because we're well-intentioned people that we you know often will put off oh you know i'm gonna wait you know once i once things settle for me once i don't have once i can let go of that second job or maybe if you're my age range once i retire <clears throat> excuse me then i'm gonna do something wonderfully humanitarian i'm gonna join the peace corps in fact i just talked to a peace corps guy uh this week at champlain i got took his card too because I just thought, oh, this is neat. He told me he did his first service at 59 years old. I mean, that's really cool. And if you can do that, that's great. If that happens, that's great. I think what isn't the best plan is to hold off for that. Like, if that happens, that's super good news. Um, but really, the thing is, we talk about our life minutes and being in the now. And in reality, you know, people now need stuff. As, as we know, they're food insecure and housing insecure. And I'm going to stop right now and say, I have no idea. Uh, no idea. I'm just, I think I'm a little foggy today. It must be a little lingering stuff from the little issue I had this week. Um, no, <clears throat> no intention of being, because I'm not this way, sanctimonious or self-righteous. I don't, seriously, I really, really don't like people that way. I should say I don't like the behavior of people that way. Separating person from the problem, right? So that isn't the plan. That's an immediate push away. Like, for me, like magnets, like, Meh, you know, like St. Paul, you know, kind of thing. Um, like a repel, that's what I'm trying to say. So, no, that's not the idea. I'm, I'm a, my doctor's in cognitive psychology, and I'm talking about neurons. Neurons, okay? So, here's the thing. When we can focus on the small stuff, we also accomplish something. If we do one small thing, like hold the door open, and that leads to this, and that leads to that, and then we just random, you know, we, well, I don't believe in random either, but we see somebody uh, maybe on the street who needs a cup of coffee, you know, whatever, and then when we do one small thing, there's actually a dopamine fix in the brain, which I suppose is the universe, you know, the universe's way, higher power's way of keeping us doing nice things for each other. And here's the thing, um, dopamine, in addition to being sort of the happy, feel good, one of the happy, because we have serotonin too, one of the happy, feel good neurotransmitters also has, um, also gives us a sense of closure in a good way, which is also how if anybody's in the Fast Mind Club and takes Adderall, it's also another, another way Adderall works. Because oftentimes, you know, when, when, when people have difficulty, you know, they're, they're procrastinators, they don't have that closure signal when you finish a paper or clean a closet, clean a car or whatever, and finish a project at work, you know, in seasoned adult world or whatever. So we also get a sense of, oh, I did that. So it's a, it's a, it's a dopamine fix with, I feel good about myself. I'm feeling really good because I saw that person smile and, you know, their hands around a warm cup of coffee or whatever it is that you did for them. Or, um, and also it's like, a, it's like a, like a little box check that leads to more box check it checks, which is really, really Cool. So I have to tell you about a video I watched. And if I can put it under here, and I remember to put it under here, I will. But I'll tell you so you can look it up yourself. His name is Mark Kelly. And it was a TEDx talk in somewhere Ireland. He had a lovely, lovely lilt to his voice, like a massage. The video is only six minutes-ish long. And I was looking it up for some other reason this week. And then uh, we happened to be doing Conscious Acts of Kindness in uh minecraft and so i said wow i'm going to show this to them and i told them this whole thing we talked about synchronicity and how things just kind of land where they're supposed to land also because that was another little learning point there and it was so neat because he talked about stopping you know he wrote, rode his bicycle to work in ireland and uh the same man was there often you know and, and he stopped one day i said can i is there anything you want and he said oh, a cup of coffee with 
you know, two sugars and a, and a milk, I think it was. And he said, okay, fine. That's actually what he said was grand. I love that. And off he went. And then he, uh, <clears throat> he, he got, he, he realized how good he felt. Like, I just feel so good. And so in Minecraft this week, I brought this up to my students and they said, they got into this whole idea of good selfish versus bad selfish because selfish has a, has a connotation of negative, right? And so I was really proud of them. I'm proud of them always in some, some kind of way. Obviously, sometimes they say things, maybe not so much, but for the most part, they're absolute rock stars and I'm proud of them in some way every single day because they are so awesome. Um, and so they talked, they really got into this deep conversation about, it. I think it's really good. Is it okay that you feel good after doing good things for people? And they came up with, absolutely. Is it okay that you continue to do things because it makes you feel good? And they really hesitated with this one, right? And they came up with, yes, because it's a win-win situation. No matter what, that person still got their coffee or that person was you still sat with them because they're lonely and ha it's a win-win that -win. there's nothing bad came out of it. So they came up unanimously with, yes, it's okay if I felt good doing something for someone else, which is, I was just super proud of them, uh, just super proud of them. And that brought us to the whole, or bring us now to the whole um, concept, not concept, I'm just have a little foggy today, pardon me, issue uh, really epidemic is it's bigger than an issue. An issue could be like small, like there's schmutz on the counter. Let's get that off of the sponge. This is way bigger than that, right? So the loneliness epidemic in the United States, and <clears throat> especially as we approach, I mean, it's, it's 365 days a year plus leap year. Okay. So I don't, don't want to zoom in on like the holidays. That's another thing we do. Oh, you know, the, you know, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, everything's coming up. Let's go be good now. And it's certainly a good idea to go do something great now too. I just uh, would like to say that, you know, Thanksgiving every day of the year in some kind of way wouldn't be bad. And I don't want to sound like Pollyanna. We know I don't like those people, right? Uh, like we think, I think we talked about this in a recent video. Loretta LaRoche, one of my favorite comedians, talks about that. Those people that say, oh, you lost your arm? Well, you do have another, don't you? You just want to like, whap, you know what I mean? So we're not talking about that. We're just talking about maybe expanding our consciousness um, to, to, you know, to live more deliberately. I'm a big fan because that's why like, I, I will explain to my students, I'm certainly not going to go out and correct everybody in the world, but I can correct them, you know, and gu guide really not correct. That's a, that's a, it makes me think of red pens. Guide is what I do with my mind crafters because to really think conscious acts of kindness and kindness is good no matter how you cut it up, right? Conscious acts of kindness, I kind of like like the phrase better because it means you really put some effort into thinking about somebody, even if you don't know them. So there, I, I think I mentioned, it was last week or whatever it was, um, that they are being sent out into the world to find somebody they don't know to do something kind for. It doesn't have to be huge. It cannot involve money unless it's on a coffee level. And because uh, I think it's, it's more meaningful, you know, and then we're saying kindness no matter what is great. I think though, when you plan it and there's intention, it just amps it up just a little bit. So anyway, that has me back at mindfulness. So a mindfulness, man, it's okay. And I'm going to leave this on here, not even edit it. Why? Because we call that human. And I'm a big fan of human, so I don't need to, to edit. I would edit maybe a phone ring. No, probably not. I've had that happen in my audio cast. Okay, anyway, loneliness, if you don't know, is, is sort of made its way right up there with obesity and smoking in the United States anyway as far as a leading cause of death. That means it is, that means it is a big, huge pro problema. And if you don't know, in England, I just forget which prime minister it was. It was about roughly five years ago, five or six years ago at the most. And and uh, I wanna say she, but I don't, anyway, prime minister of England created, created a job within the government entitled Minister for Loneliness because their their loneliness epidemic is in full surge too. It's actually created a government position to help manage the gigantic loneliness issue going on, and so um, we got it. You know, we kind of expanded our talk to to that. That it's that it's you know when we do a small thing like the coffee or the whatever, it's obviously not just about the warmth and all that is just is is the is huge too. It's is huge. 
also that, that interaction of stopping your day, the gut, that man got off his bicycle, gave, asked the person what he wanted, which gives him agency, even though it's just a cup of coffee. When you're used to having zero choices all day or very few choices, somebody asking you what you want, he could have said a croissant and he said, cup of coffee, I got a choice. And knowing that this person on some level is valuing you, even though he didn't know him. Okay, he's valuing you, he's asking, and then he goes in, comes out, brings him the coffee. So this is way bigger than a, than a you know, $2 cup of coffee is the whole point. And this is what we're talking about with focusing on the small versus, and the big stuff's good too. We need all that. And I've said before, and we're not saying, you know, we, we need funding and all that stuff. It's just, and one of my students said, and I was proud of her because I was holding back for a second. She said, well, it's much easier to write a check than it is to go spend a whole day with somebody, you know, when assisted, you know, like who's in a, a nursing home or on a cancer ward or on the street to sit for a little while and just actually talk with them, get them a cup of coffee and maybe take 15 minutes. Much easier to write a check. And that's true. No question. To give of our, to give our life minutes is much, much more difficult for us because we got to stop things. We got to sacrifice doing where we were going, what we were doing, what we would want to do. Maybe that's more than that. And we have to, and, and, and that sac there's sacrifice involved, and that's why it's harder, right? And so I was really proud of her that she came up with that on her own. And again, we're not saying that check writing isn't good because obviously we need that too. Um, it's just trying to say, focusing on the small is where it really, really where it's at. And um, that leads to our almost Thanksgiving thing with it. You know, when, when we are filled with doing these small, tiny, itty bitty acts of kindness, we can't help but landing in a place of gratitude. We can't help it. We're coming from a place of gratitude and then we're just sort of in the place of gratitude and we leave that person with that good thing we just did feeling very, very grateful. And where can you go wrong with that? You can't because gratitude is a straight road to happiness, straight road to happiness. Um, and when we're full of gratitude, full of gratitude, there's no room for anxiety. We've talked about this. No room for sadness, no worse, no room for depression. But when we're really in the moment, in this moment with that person, cup of coffee or whatever you're doing, there's no room for any of it because we're here now feeling grateful. You know, it's just, it's great. And so it's a, it's a total win-win situation. And that's what we're talking about. So, and also we, my mind crackers, we say this almost every day because it's different contexts, but whatever we practice, we inevitably get better at, right? So it can be playing soccer, playing the violin, robbing banks. They laugh when I say that. When we practice being kind, um, we become more kind. Who said that? I'm saying it right now, but I think it's Morgan Freeman. He talks about being kind, being kind, acting, practicing kindness. I forget how he said it. I'm paraphrasing. Being kind makes us more kind. That's kind of what I'm saying too. I'm so following Morgan. I'm like 95% sure it was him. Anyway, okay, so... Now's a good time to start, you know, if you can do one a day. We're talking small, make the bar reachable and do our best, and you know, but man, if that could be just like brushing your teeth once in the morning and things like that, that's the way to go. Okay, focus on the small when it comes to kindness. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from my living room in Northern Vermont. Have a mindful, very kind day.